fielder will lead it off. Luis Castillo, also a switch hitter at second base. It's Daniel Murphy at first, Jeff Francoeur in right, Jeremy Reed gets a nod in left. Tatis at third, Brian Schneider's had a tough year. He catches Anderson Hernandez, a third switch hitter in this lineup at short, and the pitcher Figueroa hits ninth. And let's check out how the Cubs take the field defensively today behind Carlos Zambrano. Brought to you by Pepsi. Pepsi, refresh everything. Fox, Fukudome, and Bradley across the outfield this afternoon. Ramirez and Terrio will be on the left side of the infield. Mike Fondo, Derek Lee on the right side. Giovanni Soto, as you just saw, will be doing the catching today for right-hander Carlos Zambrano. Hoping for a better result than his first time off the disabled list against the Washington Nationals. Uh, took the loss in that 15 to 6 drubbing the hands of the Nationals. Carlos went four and a third, gave up seven hits and eight earned runs. Massachusetts native Jim Reynolds will call the balls and strikes. He's the crew chief. Welke, Carlson, and Hoy around the bases. Well, you finished the uh, triathlon in record time. And got here to the ballpark just in time for the first pitch today. Just a little workout. The water was a little cold, wasn't it? It was all right. It was all right. Here we go. Pagan takes ball one. And we're underway. High drive to right. Bradley flipping down the shades and now comes in with a wind helping him. Makes a catch. 57 degrees. A wind out of the north at 15 miles an hour. Be hard pressed to find another August 30th home date with the game time temperature under 60. It was 52 in our booth when I got here at 9:30 this morning. <laughs> I think it's gone down since then. Very, very chilly day if you're sitting in the shade here at Wrigley, but. On the other hand, an absolutely beautiful afternoon if you happen to have seats in the sun. Castillo normally extremely patient, very aggressive up there, hacking 0-2. He's had good numbers against Zambrano in his career. It's it just one for 12 on this road trip, but has been very solid since the middle part of June. That's outside. Two two to Castillo. See Zambrano kind of readjusting after that last pitch. This time he was on the shelf was because of the back issues. Strikes out. Pretty good contact, man, and Luis Castillo. Well, that's a good sign. As you mentioned, Castillo, usually a very good contact hitter. Strikes out infrequently, walks even less frequently, but this time comes up empty against a Zambrano tailing fastball. Murphy bounces. To Fontenot, who throws him out, and Carlos with a very quick top of the first. The Cubs are coming up offensively when we come back.
Ontario, Bradley, Lee at the top. Aramis Ramirez with a 17-game hitting streak at home. Puka Domes in center. Fox in again for Soriano and left. Mike Fontenot at second. Giovanni Soto catches and Carlos Zambrano hit a home run his last start. Will bat ninth. Take a look at the Mets defensively. Jeremy Reed, Angel Pagan, and Jeff Francoeur with the cannon arm out there in right field. Got to be careful of him. Tatis, Hernandez, Castillo, and Murphy across the infield. Ryan Schneider once again doing the catching today for right-hander. Journeyman right-hander, Nelson Figueroa. 35 years old. Their rotation, their whole team has been ravaged by injury. Called strike to Ryan Terrio. No Johan Santana, no John Main, no Oliver Perez. They're all out on the DL. Another strike 0 and 2. David Wright will be back in a couple of days, but 19 different players have gone to the disabled list this season. I think right now they have 13 on that list. You could uh, get a lot of managers around the major leagues to take a look at that Mets disabled list and say, I'll take my chances with that team when healthy. David Wright, Jose Reyes, Carlos Beltran, Carlos Delgado. Beginnings of a pretty good looking team right there, Alex Cora. And we'll see David Wright next weekend in New York. He's coming back from a concussion. Terrio foul tips and he's out for the strikeout. So Figueroa punching out Terrio and that'll bring up the red hot Milton Bradley. Six for seven in the series. 11 for 20 on the homestand. Well, he's been great since he has started taking some major heat for his uh, comments about not feeling totally comfortable here at Wrigley Field. But he sure has hit like he's comfortable. And the Cubs need everybody to get as hot as Bradley's been. Actually, offensively, they've scored 35 runs on this homestand. That's seven per game. They're giving up six per game. And they're three and two through five. The 2 0 pitch outside, 3 and 0. Now we've seen Milton swing quite often this year on three and O pitches. See if he goes after a strike here. Yes, he does. Yeah, we talked about it every time he does that. A lot of hitters just don't like to swing at that three O pitch. Their reasoning is if the pitcher throws me a strike three and O, he still has to throw me two more to get me out. So I'm going to take that three O pitch, get one more good look at the pitcher, and then go to hacking on the three one pitch. Here is that three one, and it misses for ball four. So Bradley is the first base runner for either team. And now it's Derek Lee. Way high for ball one. He's only one for 12 lifetime against Figueroa. The, the one hit was a home run. The kick, the pitch, a swing and a miss. Now, nothing tricky from Figueroa. He'll throw a cut fastball, a sinking fastball. He'll change speeds on his slider to make it bigger or smaller, depending on what he's trying to get that opposing hitter to do an occasional curveball occasional straight changeup. A ball and two strikes to Lee Ramirez on deck. Just underway the Mets went down in order in the top of the first. Base hit center field so Derek. Just his second career hit against this veteran righty, and here comes Ramirez with two on and only one out. Oh, I said it on Friday. Derek Lee looks like he is about to start heating it up even more so than he has been. 
That's a good slider at the outside corner, breaking down and away, stayed on it, lined it right back up the middle of the field. When pitchers have left pitches from the middle of the plate in, he has taken some vicious home run swings recently. Aramis is on pace to drive in 57 runs this season and played just 71 games. Since 1901, the Cubs record for most RBIs with 71 or fewer games played. 50 by a guy named Vince Barton in 1931. That'd be a pretty good uh, accomplishment for Ramirez. He has 45 currently. Good rip, fouled it back. One and two. He's hit it seven in a row overall and 17 straight at home. No Soriano today had his left knee checked out after an MRI yesterday showed some inflammation. So Jake Fox is in playing left yet again after a five RBI performance. Jeff Baker scratched. As he was going to start at third yesterday with uh, an injured right pinky finger, but he's available off the bench. Three and two, the count. A lot of Aramis Ramirez hits recently have come to the opposite field, including a double off the wall and another base hit into right field in the game yesterday. Out into left center, it's going to drop down, and Bradley's going to score. Lee on his way to third. Ramirez with an eight game hitting streak in his 46th RBI. Mets team with a guy that uh, probably would be pitching in long relief out of the bullpen at best. This is exactly what the Cubs are supposed to do against this team today. Come out firing on all cylinders, put them on the defensive as quickly as possible. Well, that ball really knuckled as it went into the gap. I think that anything in the air is going to be playing a ton of tricks today. I mean, we had it at 15 miles an hour coming out of the north, but I think it's blowing harder than that right now. A good day to work on your line drive ground ball swing. Uh, anything hit in the air to center field, left center, even right center is just going to be pushed back toward the infield. And as always, as you would say, you got to run everything out with the sun and the wind. It's going to be a tough day for the defense. Good day for the pitchers, but a little tricky for the guys with the gloves behind them. Everybody chase everything. Two strikes to Koske, first and third. And he went. Oh, no, he did not. James Hoy said so from third. That's the second out. Well, as always, we'll have the opportunity to check a replay. And, uh, well, I was wrong. Yes, dear, you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just goes to show how easily you can be deceived on those check swings. From our vantage point up here in the press box, I was sure Koske had checked his swing there, but the replay clearly showed he did not. Yesterday's hero, Jake Fox, the two big home runs in the series. Soriano's game winning three run blast late Friday, and the Fox homer yesterday came on 0 2 pitches. Couple of hangers. That one was not 0 and 2. All right. Well, he's got him where he wants him. 0 and 2. Talking about Jake Fox. Uh, I'll tell you, those are more than respectable. Those are very good numbers in an 0 2 count. A 258 batting average. You know, most guys hit down in the hundreds on an 0 2 count. The kick and the next 0-2. This time he strikes out. 
On a high fastball, the Cubs get a run on a couple of hits. They lead two. It's one to nothing after one. Be sure to arrive early. The first 10,000 fans will receive an exclusive limited edition Billy Williams bobblehead doll compliments of Fannie Mae. Roy Oswalt will get the start for the Astros. Cubs were going to face both Wandy Rodriguez and Oswalt in that series. But the uh, Astros had to reconfigure. They got a short start from Jorman Bazardo the other night in Arizona so Rodriguez is going today instead. On WGN the next three days. Monday and Tuesday will be night games. Oswald and Harden tomorrow night Moeller and Wells Tuesday night. Don't forget about Thursday's makeup game against the White Sox. So one o'clock here on WGN as Frank Coors strikes out. Four up, four down for Zambrano. From our Southwest Sky Cam, you see the strike three pitch to Jeff Francoeur, perfectly placed. We've talked about Francoeur throughout this series and throughout his career. He is one of those hitters you do not have to throw strikes to get him out. A perfect example right there, chasing that splitter in the dirt on a two-strike count. Jeremy Reed bunts it foul, getting his only start of the series. All for two so far as a pinch hitter. We got him from Seattle over the winter. Second round pick of the White Sox way back when. Their first base runner as Reed singles with one out. While we have a moment, let's step aside and see what's coming up on WGN. Fernando Tatis has been red hot at the plate four straight multi hit games nine for his last 16 including four hits in this series but a pretty big base running blunder yesterday which we uh, showed you in the leadoff man he made the first out of an inning at home plate which is usually a big no no. I don't know Fernando Tatis, but I'm sure he would agree with us that this just can't happen. No. 
and took advantage actually of a throw to nowhere. Milton Bradley's throw just kind of came back in toward the middle of the infield. Ryan Terrio came over from his position covering the bag at second to take that throw and threw on quickly to Coy Hill at home plate for the out. But yeah, you're absolutely right. A terrible boneheaded base running play by Tatis. I talked to Ryan Dempster and you know he agreed that was a big play in terms of the momentum in that inning. Let's see if he went. Uh, yeah. yeah. So it's three and oh instead of two and one. Let's see if Z can get back in it. Well when you're a pitcher in an inning like that, you know, bases loaded, nobody out, you're just begging for an out. And the final was eleven to four, but you just don't know how Dempster would have gotten out of that inning had Tatis stayed at third. It's those little things. I think the Mets wasn't it Ryan Church who missed third base in a game at L.A. early in the year. I mean they've, they've had some bizarre plays. You know, talking to a lot of people close to the Mets and obviously uh, we've documented very well how many guys they have on the DL not only players but very very key players to this Mets team but they said even at full strength this Mets team was prone to making a lot of mental mistakes defensively and on the bases. Jerry Manuel trying to keep it all together it has not been easy. He replaced Willie Randolph in the middle of last season. Runner goes again. Ground ball and Fontenot is actually moving to his left. As the pitch was being delivered and that gave Tatis enough room for a base hit first and third. Odd looking play right there. I'm not sure if Mike Fontenot just didn't see that ball off the bat. Now watch his reaction at second base. His first movement is to his left. The ball is hit back to his right. Sometimes infielders, especially for bright sunny day games, will lose the ball out of his shirt behind home plate. But Fontenot badly out of position on that ground ball that should have resulted in at least one out. Now Brian Schneider actually had the the double on that play we just showed you in which Tatis was thrown out. He knocked in two on that double and had two hits but it's been a, a very rough year for Schneider hitting under 190. Not going to do a ton of damage offensively. He's very good defensively but I want to see your guys up in the 200s at least. Swing and a miss one and two. Well, those are the kind of swings that get you down below the Mendoza line. I mean that's a two strike defensive swing right there just trying to protect the plate. The problem was he didn't have two strikes on it. He needs a strikeout. Schneider able to stay alive. Cubs would also like a chance at a double play. They have a ground ball pitcher on the mound. Really bears down in these spots. Well, Schneider doesn't need a hit to drive in a run. Well, the outfielder's playing in. I mean, Koske playing a shallow center field against the position players, as you'll see, and that's because of the wind conditions. Same with Jake Fox. Yeah, Jake Fox is normally a guy that likes to play a little extra deep just to protect himself on that ball hit over his head, but there doesn't figure to be any of those today. Two down in the inning. From Southwest Sky Cam, Zambrano with a good splitter working early in the ball game today. Very similar to the pitch he threw Jeff Francoeur on the two strike count in. It's a very similar result of swing and a miss at a pitch out of the zone. Now the shortstop Anderson Hernandez has tied a career high with a six game hitting streak. Strike one. Three hits Thursday and then the next time he got in the lineup yesterday had two more. Oh, 
normally the Mets starting shortstops at the top of the order named Jose Reyes. Reyes is out with a calf injury. He's been out since May. Well, I don't think it's too much of a stretch land to say that the, the Mets are missing three potential MVP candidates. You mentioned Reyes at shortstop, David Wright at third, and Carlos Beltran in center field, guys that year by year by year are among the leaders in voting for the most valuable player award in the National League. And a potential Cy Young candidate in Johan Santana. Just outside. Count even at two apiece. Even if he doesn't get Hernandez and walks him, he has a pitcher, Figueroa, on deck. It's a nice plan B, but obviously you'd like to get this guy right here and have Nelson Figueroa leading off the next inning for the Mets. Figueroa, very limited sample size as a hitter, two for six this season. He's been used mostly out of the bullpen for the Mets, but getting a start here today. Bouncer to Fontenot, and the inning is over. Back to back singles, but no damage. Cubs lead one to nothing early. minute stats and information designed to give you everything you need to know during the game. The WGN Sports Game Zone is available for every Cubs game and is brought to you by the Great Escape. Pools, patio sets, play sets, hot tubs, and more. Beautiful shot of downtown Chicago. We're on the north side of town. And it's a bottom three in the Cubs lineup. Mike Fontenot. Strike one. He'll be followed by Giovanni Soto and the pitcher Carlos Zambrano. An eye on all the uh, other action around baseball. The Marlins 
were down three to nothing going to the bottom of the fourth at home against San Diego, but then they played at five. So they lead five three. Figueroa with a nice play. Today's Walgreens celebrity bat kids are Stephanie Hornick from Elgin, Illinois, and Ryan Richa from West Chicago, Illinois. For more information on how you can be a Walgreens celebrity bat kid, go to WGNRadio.com. Walgreens, the pharmacy of the Chicago Cubs. Soto fouls off. Nelson Figueroa grew up rooting for the team. He's pitching for. He's from Brooklyn. Went to Brandeis University. And was taken by the Mets in the 30th round of the 95 draft. He has four strikeouts here early. And when the first one of the looking variety. They want a slider that he wrapped a little bit more, makes it break a little bit further. Starts right in the middle of the plate, ends up on the outside corner. He'll make that slider almost like a cut fastball at times. At other times, it'll be like a big wrap around flat curveball. Zambrano tied the game in his last start with a home run. Washington ended up winning at 15 to 6, but it was his 20th career blast. Fourth of the season that leads all major league pitchers. He might try to hit one today, but I, 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 let's put it this way I'll put nothing past him. I think it's going to be really tough. I think it would it'd have to be something from the door over to the foul pole in right field, unless you hit it out there to the Bachelorette Park. But light bleachers. That would be a blast. Yeah. Not hanging out with the bachelorette party, hitting one up there would be a blast. They both might be. Yeah, you never know. Two balls, two strikes. Strike three. So bigger roll with five strikeouts in the first two innings. Buddy trails one to nothing.
education throwing out the ceremonial first pitch as part of the Chicago Public Schools back to school campaign September 8th first day of classes in the Chicago Public Schools Mega Millions can find you every Tuesday and Friday Mega Millions have fun responsibly Figueroa leading off the third for the Mets with the Cubs leading one to nothing Carlos Zambrano, Milton Bradley will be taping public service announcements tomorrow to support the uh, program. And as all the kids are encouraged to be back in school on September 8th, first full day of school, first full day of instruction. Fouled at the plate. You have perfect attendance. <laughs> when I was there, <laughs> Terry O throws to first. I was much well better said. in elementary school and middle school and high school. I was I was very good. College is a little different story. A few more temptations, a few more distractions, but I figured it out eventually. Back to the top and Angel Pagan. You know, growing up in a small hometown, it was kind of tough to ditch school because everybody in town knew everybody else. It wasn't like you could sneak around and not get caught. Besides, there wasn't anything else to do. School was our best option. This endorsement courtesy of Bob Brenlin. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else to do. <laughs> Two and zero. Oh. Cardinals and Nationals scoreless in the third. Bush Stadium. Garrett Mock and Adam Wainwright. I bet you won a few perfect attendance awards, didn't you? I, I wouldn't say I won awards, but I I generally showed up. Yes. Was the old line on was Woody Allen 90% of success and showing up. That's right. Two two to Pagan. Z two and zero with a 189 and four career games against the Mets at home. Four and one overall versus New York. Podcast fans, Bob and I will be recording a new podcast after the game today, and it'll be up for viewing soon. Download it on WGNTV.com. Just go there, click on the sports header, look for the link, click, download, and enjoy. Bob will have on back to school tips. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I encourage the youngsters out there to, you know, strive for perfect attendance. Try to learn something every day. I mean, uh, we Obviously, we've been out of school for a few years, and uh, I still feel like I try to learn something out here at the ballpark every day. Yeah, this is our classroom. What I learned today is don't be fooled by the bright sunshine. Bring a jacket. Yeah, we're always learning that lesson here at Wrigley Field as uh, Pagan pulls it into right. Just listen to Tom Skillet yeah. every day. He'll tell you. I haven't seen much aggressive base running from the Mets in this series. They found themselves uh, behind rather early. But uh, should Jerry Manuel decide to get something going, Angel Pagan would be a pretty good candidate. 11 out of 17 this season in stolen base attempts. He definitely has stolen base speed. It's a question of whether he can get a jump against Carlos Zambrano. We talked the other day about Luis Castillo and the, the dropped pop up that cost the Mets 
a game at Yankee Stadium. A Rod hit the pop up. The Mets were ahead by one. And when the play ended, the game was over. The Yankees won. But you learn a lot about a person and what's inside when they deal with adversity like that. And since then, the next day, June 13th, he has hit 338, the fourth best batting average in the National League. You know what I think? I think Luis Castillo would have hit 338 even if he caught that pop up. He may have, yeah. <laughs> He's a pretty good hitter. But you have to think, playing in New York and having it come in a Mets Yankees game and hearing, I think he got a, like a standing ovation from the Yankee fans when he came up to bat the next day. To quickly put that out of your head is pretty impressive. Fontana laid out, couldn't get it. Pagan's going to hold up at second. You're going to see a lot of base runners maybe not take the extra base today because the outfielders are playing shallow. You know, Pagan wanted to get to third with only one out, but he couldn't. Yeah, just another example of how the wind conditions here at Wrigley, more so than any other ballpark in the major leagues, affect the play on the field. Not only the wind blowing the baseball around, making it tougher for defenders to make the play, but as you said, with the wind blowing straight in, upwards to 20 miles an hour, the outfielders can cheat in several steps more than they normally would. That's going to make it tough to take that extra base. Murphy grounded out his first time. And looks at ball one. Murphy keeps notes on every at bat. He was inspired by teammate Carlos Delgado, who has kept a, a journal for a long time. Throw to second, goes in the center. Pagan able to see it, and he's on his way to third. Fukudome's throw, not good, and Castillo able to get to second. Z has thrown a few away on those pickoff attempts. And that's his third error of the season. And we know how quick his feet are. He gets himself into a good position, but he throws the ball in the one location where Ryan Terrio can't make an adjustment. Back into the sliding runner where Terrio just came from. Tough to change directions, deal with that runner sliding back into the bag. The throw is going in the opposite direction. Ryan couldn't even get leather on it. Corner men in back up the middle and Murphy pops it into shallow center and it's going to drop. He's going to have a play possibly on Pagan. No, Pagan's speed just too good. Any other guy in Fukudome may have actually had a play on a base hit. He was trying to deke the runner and did all he could. It's 1 1. Pretty heads up by, by Koske. He made it look like he was going to catch that shallow pop up. That forced Pagan to stay back at the bag at third. And I think you're absolutely right. Anybody other than Pagan with his blazing speed, Koske probably has a play on him here at the plate. No chance to catch that ball in the air, so he stood up as if he were going to catch it on the fly, then came charging in, played the short hop. Strong throw to the plate, but just too much speed by Pagan. And it, it, furthermore, on the win, Bob, uh, I bet you the third base coaches for both teams are going to tell guys on a play like that, don't even tag. Go halfway up the line. If it drops, you score. But if it's caught, you're not really going to have a chance anyway. The error on the throw by Z, helping lead to that run, the 20th error by Cubs pitchers. Frank Coor gives the Mets the lead as he drives in Castillo. So the Cubs pitchers had the most errors among all staffs in the majors. It's four consecutive hits. I mean, for the life of me, I do not understand why anybody throws this guy a strike on the first pitch. He is coming out of that on-deck circle. He would swing at the rosin bag if he threw it up there on the first pitch. 
Got a fastball right in the middle of the plate where he could whack it into left field for an RBI base hit. Big hack by Jeremy Reed. So first and second two in and the Mets have a 2 1 lead. Frank Cor goes after. 45% of the first pitches he sees Fontenot goes out and this will be a double play an easy one as Murphy took off thinking that ball was going to get out into right center or he forgot how many outs there were at any rate the innings over it's 2 1 Mets. And the Mets have led in every game in this series, but they're 0 2 to start it. A slow homestand for Ryan Terrio. And he's 3 for 23. Jeff Francoeur giving them the lead after Murphy knocked in a run. Eventually, Murphy was doubled off second to end the inning. 1 and 1 the count on Terrio. Oh, did we mention the Mets are having some base running issues this year? Wow. Woof. It continues. Saw a game earlier this season when Carlos Beltran was healthy in Manning center field for the Mets. Hit a ball off the right field wall and stood at home plate thinking it was a home run. Ball bounced off the wall, rolled back toward the infield. He tried to turn it into a triple and was thrown out at third base to kill a route. So even the superstars have not been immune from base running mistakes this year. A full count to Terry o Bradley on deck. The pitch fouled back. Another 3 2, and he struck him out. So Terrio's struggles this week continue. Follow your team on your iPhone and iPod Touch with MLB.com at Bat 2009, featuring play by play video highlights and live audio broadcasts. Visit Cubs.com on your iPhone or iPod Touch to purchase. Bradley had a stretch of seven. Straight plate appearances during which he reached base. And he struck out in the seventh inning yesterday, but he walked and scored in the first today. Oh. 
One ball, one strike. A lot of birthdays today. Sean Marshall, Cubs left hander, turning 27. Happy birthday to Sean. Back of third goes Tatis. And he has it. My good friend Craig Lynch from WLPO Radio has been covering the Cubs for a long time, celebrating his 60th birthday today. And a combined celebration out in Huntley, Illinois. Eric Jake and Josh Lonegro and Maddox Rutkowski. Also their birthdays. It up. Castillo's out. Who's going to get it? Nobody. Castillo and Pagan looking at one another. I think Angel wanted it, but he didn't want to crash into the Mets second baseman. And that's a hit. Boy, this is a tough play for a second baseman going back, looking over his shoulder, back up into the sun. We've talked about how the wind is howling straight in. That is Angel Pagan's ball all the way right there. I think you're right. He had a beat on it, wanted to call his second baseman off, but that might have been one of those situations where the younger player defers to the gold glove second baseman. But that's a much easier play for the outfielder coming in on a day like this. So it's a bloop single for Derek Lee, two for two. And again, that's why every guy out of the box, they got to run hard and treat every ball like it's going to be a hit. I mean, the natural thing to do uh, at the major league level is to assume if you hit a ball that high in the air between three defenders, somebody's going to catch it. But you never know. Hard, you may end up in scoring position. Aramis Ramirez could come up with a big two out base hit. Tie this ball game up, but as it is, Derek's over there at first base. Oof. Huge swing by Ramirez, and that ends the inning. Cubs trail 2 1 after three. Angel Pagan and Razor shines. 
you know, talking about teachable moments and with these two teams on the field there have been plenty of teachable moments in this three game series razor shines letting Angel Pagan know what should have happened on that play Tatis way up in the air Jake Fox oh watch this nicely done by Jake Fox just catch it tell you what he looked pretty comfortable I think most left fielders would have looked a little uncertain when that ball went up in the air and on a normal day that's a home run this is one of those odd days defensively as an outfielder you can't trust your eyes that ball came off the bat of Fernando Tatis looked like it had a chance to get out of here a couple of crossovers this direction that direction but ultimately Jake gets underneath it and makes a nice catch yeah, your eyes tell you all oh, that ball's crushed that's back near the fence if not up into the bleachers but you know that wind is blowing at the back of your neck so you just have to trust your own instincts and your own judgment and don't believe what you see with your eyes go to where you think that ball is going to come down after the wind affects it well the crowd reacted as if that ball was going to end up on wavelength one and two Let, let's just let's listen to the crowd when the ball leaves the back Oh no. <laughs> Jake handled it well. One and two on Schneider. And I think, Len, uh, that Jake Fox has probably taken a little unfair criticism for his defense. That was a big topic of conversation initially. Why isn't Jake Fox up here from AAA? He was setting the world on fire with his bat down in Iowa. But the knock was that defensively there was nowhere on the field you can play him. I think there's a very big difference between being an adequate defender and being a defender that doesn't look comfortable and Jake never really looks totally comfortable but he makes most of the plays now if you want somebody that's very stylish and very pretty well then maybe you ought to sign Ozzy Smith but Jake Fox uh, to his own admission said I I'll get it done it may not always be pretty but I will get it done to the best of my ability and he's done that Schneider with a one out single and well, Jake's paid to hit. He's hitting 300. So if he does that, you can absolutely live with the defense. Hernandez grounded out to end the second. Ramirez in on the grass at third. Lee holding on the runner at first. The Mets lead two to one. Slicing fly to left, Fox over. This one's fair, and it gets by him as it kicks off the sidewall. Schneider's going to be sent home and is going to score. Hernandez all the way to third with a triple. His third triple of the year, and he makes it three to one. Might be the toughest ball that Jake Fox will have out there in left field today. A slicing line drive, looking up into the sun, the ball working not only away from him toward the line, but the wind knocking it down. And it got caught in no man's land there. Didn't know whether to dive for that ball close to the side wall or try to play it on a hop and got caught in between. Infield in with the pitcher at the plate and the runner at third, and the tapper foul. Jerry Manuel and the Mets have used the squeeze play a half a dozen times this year, but four of those six times came with Luis Castillo at the plate. A little different story with the pitcher, although I did mention Figueroa handles the bat pretty well for a pitcher. Carlos with an 0-1 base hit. And it's four to one. That was not a cheapie either. Figueroa did it pretty hard back up the middle. 
That's kind of a bat you wish all your pitchers would have with a runner at third base in the infield drawn in. Watch Figueroa just punched at that ball like he was playing pepper with some of his teammates down the right field line before the game. If you don't hit that ground ball directly at a defender, got a pretty good chance to get through. Tom Gorzolani is now up in the bullpen. Z gave up two singles in the second, four in a row in the third, and now three straight hits in the fourth, including a triple. Well, Figueroa has seven strikeouts. Zambrano has only two, and they're starting to really tee him up now. Second straight inning, they've had four straight hits. Larry Rothschild will head out to the mound. It's ten hits for New York. Every guy in the Mets lineup has a hit. And we don't need to remind you this is not the Mets normal starting lineup loaded with all stars and good offensive players. This is basically a 4 a team that they have out there on the field right now. Before they got here in Florida on the Thursday. The top eight in their lineup all had at least two hits. And today all nine with one. And Pagan is two for three at the top. Castillo singled and scored in the third. Two and nothing. I want to send out get well wishes to Diane Lehman watching today, dealing with a, a health issue. And Diane, we hope you're feeling better. Hang in there. Diane's son Ken works security here at Wrigley Field. Drives around Ron Santo. He's one of our favorites. 3 0. Oh. Z is dangerously close to getting the hook. Strike two. The three two pitch. Fukudome coming after it. It's going to land as Fox plays it on the bounce. And another ball slicing away from a Cubs outfielder. And that's it. Five straight hits off Zambrano. 11 in just three and a third. The Mets have them loaded. And Tom Gorzolani is going to come in for Zambrano. Another short outing for Z off the DL. Not letting him hear about it. It's 4 1 Mets.
innings over his last three starts. It'll be in August to forget for Carlos Zambrano. Now Tom Gorzolani now in the bullpen. After Ted Lilly came back from the disabled list. Tough spot. Bases loaded, one out. Breaking ball, swing and a miss by Murphy. One inning, three runs allowed by Gorzolani against Washington five days ago. Up down the right field line, and it's going to be caught by Bradley. Here's a throw to the plate. Nicely done. He keeps Figueroa at third. Two down. Are you surprised that ball stayed yeah. in fair territory? I, I'm surprised it even stayed on the field of play. I thought it was going to end up in the bleachers, but. Bradley hustled in from his position in deep right field got to that ball got rid of it quickly and held the runner at third base. I didn't think anybody was going to have a play on that one. It almost looked like that ball got held up by the wind and that it. it just kind of stayed right there. Well, I know for a lot of players, it's no fun playing on a day like this where you're just not quite sure where anything's going. But as a fan, I, I do like the fact that every day can be different here. And this ballpark can play completely differently depending on the wind and the sun and the other weather conditions that the Cubs deal with. Terrio will pick it up. Fontano covering second. The Mets get two, but remember they had five straight hits, so it could have been a ton worse. It's 4-1. All the traffic out there. Kosuke Fukudome hitting 100 points better in the second half than last year with an on base percentage up around 440. That's today's Toyota moving forward thanks to Toyota. And twice, Look who's at the plate. Twice as many extra base hits. I, I think that's an important note as well. Not only is he getting his hits, he's driving the ball into the gap and out of the ballpark. Have to find a way to get to Nelson Figueroa, who already has reached his season high in strikeouts. Previous high was five. 
on August 5th. And that was in relief. Seven strikeouts through three. Two balls, no strikes to Fukudome. Make it two and one. Fukudome bunts. And it ends up being just foul as Tatis got to it. It hit the lip of the grass in foul territory and almost ended up there. That's why corner infielders and catchers and pitchers are told when that ball's in foul territory, get to it as quickly as you can and touch it. If that ball gets back on the chalk line, it's a fair ball. That's what you like to see if a guy's trying to bunt for a base hit coaches will tell him it's either fair or it's foul put it right down the line Fukudome oh, takes a fastball right down the middle for a called strike three now, you don't want to bunt the ball back to the pitcher or right in front of home plate where the pitcher or catcher can make a play on you you want to put it down that line force the corner infielder to make the play and give him a tough decision is that ball fair is it going to go foul So that ties Figueroa's career high eight strikeouts did it back on September 4th of 02 against Florida. Ten outs in the game for the Mets eight of them have come via the strikeout one little tapper back to the mound by Mike Fontenot and a pop up to third base that's been it. One and two on Jake Fox. And this one pushed out of play by that wind. I don't want to wish my parents a happy 39th wedding anniversary. One day late, Sean Marshall, the birthday boy, gets ready. Swing and a miss. Nine strikeouts, a new career high for Figueroa. Figueroa has a real good feel for that slider today. As I've mentioned a couple times already, he'll change speeds on it. He'll move it around inside corner, outside corner, up and down. Hasn't been that consistent with his fastball up to this point of the game, but he has been able to throw strikes with the slider. Another anniversary today, Len. Uh, Jason Hall, the Cubs training staff intern for the summer, wants to wish his wife Amanda a happy first anniversary. Jason does a great job working with Mark O'Neill and Ed Halber for the Cubs. Yes, he does. So I misspoke earlier. The uh, the previous career high in strikeouts was actually against the Cubs when Figueroa was with the Milwaukee Brewers back on September 4th, 2002. Took the loss that day. Mark Bellhorn struck out four times that day against Figueroa. 3 1 to Fontenot fouled off. Hey, one more anniversary wish. We got a nice letter from Mr. and Mrs. Charles Lauer. Claire and Charles celebrating their 68th anniversary wow. here on August 30th from Fort Wayne, Indiana. In the air, Pagan in center makes the catch. That's the shutdown inning for Figueroa as the Cubs go down one, two, three. It's four, one Mets.
the 2009 Chicago Cubs baseball season on WGN, your official summer baseball station, is brought to you by Budweiser Select. Full flavor, 99 calories, the exception to the rule. Tom Gorzolani still on, facing Jeremy Reed. Tom got the final two outs of the fourth with the bases loaded. In support of Carlos Zambrano gave up four runs three were earned in just three and a third today. Cubs are three and two on this 10 game homestand. A 2 0. Ow. Woo. Well that ball was in and Reed took a big hack and fouled it straight down. Off something that hurt. Be all right in a couple months. I don't know how he hit this pitch. Ooh, off the front of the right ankle. Man, it wasn't as inside as I thought, but he was way out in front and over top of it. Zolani from Orland Park. Three and two. At the Marist High School. Call strike three in the outside corner. Now time for the fifth inning brought to you by Subway. Hey, Chicagoland viewers, how would you like to win five $5 footlongs from Subway? Just be the 500th texter to text Subway to 97999. Go to WGNTV.com for complete info and rules. Tati steps out. Miss the outside corner. Tatis batting sixth in the Mets lineup today. This tells you a little bit about the Mets and, uh, and certainly about Tatis and how he's resurrected his career. But on August 11, when he was put in the third position in the order, it was the first time since 2001 that he started a game and hit third. Was when he was a Montreal Expo. Breaks his bat as he grounds to Terrio. And got a nice candy hop at the end. Or I guess they call it a Sunday hop on a Sunday. On a Sunday. Yeah. Bright sunshiny Sunday. I used to like to say it went up the ramp. Ground ball hit to the left side, and that last hop comes right up belt high for the infielder. Couldn't be more perfect. We say it all the time in a game like this. If the Cubs are going to win this game, it requires the bullpen to be particularly sharp. Schneider, high and deep right center, Bradley. Who caught it? It was Bradley. Krinkowski heard him calling him off. Five straight set down by Gorzolani. It's 4 1 Mets.
it's the Fruit Bat, September 20th and 21st, brought to you by Bud Light. Bud Light, the difference is drinkability. And they want everyone in attendance to know, don't hit them with tennis rackets. <laughs> Please. I like that sound. Sound I like even better is bat hitting ball. Let's go offense. Soto, Miles a pinch hitter, and then Terrio. Nice job, Tom Gorzolani. A pop up, but again, Soto running it out hard as Castillo makes <laughs> the catch. Ooh. Right off the end of the bat, up the elevator shaft. Castillo gets back there, faces up to home plate, has to come in three or four more steps. I think he was having flashbacks of that pop up he dropped against the Yankees. Elevator shaft, it was Space Mountain. <laughs> Miles pops into the left. And that's caught by Reed, so the struggles of Aaron Miles continue over his last 18. Well, the Cubs have gotten nothing going against Figueroa since the first inning. They've had one base runner. He has struck out three in the first, two in the second, two in the third, two in the fourth. Looking for his first strikeout in the fifth. He's already fanned Terrio twice. Side two and nothing. Rick Ankiel with a sack fly in the fourth. They're now in the sixth, and the Cardinals lead the Nationals one to nothing. Two and one. They're in the eighth in Florida. The Marlins leading the Padres by three. They're already in the bottom of the ninth in Cincinnati. The Dodgers and Reds are tied at 2 2. Milwaukee trying to win its 21st in a row at home against the Pirates. They lead 4 1. Francoeur, no play off the sidewall. So the Pirates broke that long losing streak against the Brewers in Pittsburgh, but they've lost 20 in a row in Milwaukee. A couple of rookies have had. Big years with home runs in that one. Garrett Jones is 16th for the Pirates. Casey McGee, the former Cub, with his 11th for the Brewers. Lined over Castillo out into the gap. Pagano over quickly. Keep Terry over to a two out single. Two out lightning here from Ryan Terry on a fastball up and out over the plate. That patented inside out swing drives a line drive just over the head of Castillo at second base. Brief bobble by Pagan out there in right center, but no chance for the riot to advance. And Bradley getting hit to bring the tying run to the plate. Milton's all right. Mark O'Neill and Lou Pinella came out briefly, but Bradley heading to first base. That slider that Figueroa's had such good command of in the early going. This time he throws it down and in. Caught Milton on the outside of that right ankle. Ouch. So Lee's two for two. 
outside. Well, what's Ozzy going to say after uh, the White Sox game today? It's eight to two. They're down in the uh, bottom of the eighth. Yankee Stadium. It's been a dismal start to their trip. It will end here on Thursday. Ozzie blasted his team yesterday. He said, quote, I watched Little League this morning and they played better. This is not Major League Ball. 3 0 oh on Lee. Ramirez on deck. All of a sudden, the Mets are going to get some action in their bullpen. A lot of guys are stretching. Is going to catch it out in right center. Second cut the swing on a 3 0 pitch. First one to make it out today. 4 1 Mets. Wrigley Field, sponsored by Kimberly Clark. The first 20,000 fans will receive a Cubs baseball bingo card with directions on how to play along throughout the game. Bingo winners will receive exciting prizes, including a grand prize of four tickets and a chance to throw out a ceremonial first pitch at a 2010 Cubs game. For more information, visit Cubs.com. Bingo! <laughs> K-Rod is here. Francisco Rodriguez. Sean Marshall is in. Facing Anderson Hernandez, who bats right handed versus a lefty. It'd be nice if that's the only appearance we get from K Rod today, yeah. is his appearance in the bullpen for the Mets. Don't want to see him in the ballgame. Greeting Japanese born Ken Takahashi among the Mets relievers. Takahashi, a 40 year old rookie. The 2 1 is outside. Cubs didn't have to face Billy Wagner this weekend after he eventually agreed to a trade to the Boston Red Sox. It's a strike three and two to count. Right. 
Short right, Fontenot, Lee. There's Mike Fontenot on the ground. Cubs and Cubs wives hosted their seventh annual food drive prior to yesterday's game. They raised approximately 15,000 pounds of food for the Lakeview Pantry. So thanks to everyone who donated. Also raised over $2,500 in cash donations. The event has raised since 2003 more than 83,000 pounds of food. Funny look that time from Giovanni Soto out to the mound and Sean Marshall looks like Sean threw him a cutter. Not sure exactly what Gio was expecting, but that ball had a lot of late movement. He dropped it. It was actually right in the middle of the strike zone. Still got the call from home plate umpire Jim Reynolds, but usually you catch the strikes. Figaro with a big RBI single. Two run fourth. Swings and misses and strikes out. Days ago, the Daytona Cubs in the Florida State League had their second combined seven inning no hitter in two weeks. Oswaldo Martinez, uh, part of both, he and Michael Percante combined on a no no versus Clearwater. Also, yesterday, Michael Hoffpower at Iowa, helping the I Cubs win their fourth in a row, went two for four. And knocked in threes, the franchise's all time RBI leader, 282 in 369 games for Iowa. <laughs> a good feeling we'll see Micah on Tuesday when the rosters expand. Joe Hicks had the previous mark of 281 RBIs. Ryan Sandberg's Tennessee Smokies tied for first in the Northern Division. As they go down the stretch here, Tyler Colvin with a 14 game hitting streak. The Peoria Chiefs, their magic number to clinch the division down to two. They're already in the playoffs. Austin Bibbins Dirks with another win. Fontenot just can't get it as Pagan picks up his third single. So tantalizing. It wasn't hit hard, but the wind pushed it away from Fontenot. A lot of side English on that ball, really compounding that wind blowing in from center field, kept pushing it further and further away from Mike Fontenot. The pitch to Castillo is a strike. When I watch Angel Pagan, you know who I think of? Shane Victorino. Certainly Victorino's had a, a better major league career to this point, but switch hitting center fielders with good speed. I can see that. You know, Angel, uh, either because of ineffectiveness or injuries, he just hasn't been able to really ever earn an everyday job at the major league level. He's always been a nice fourth or fifth outfielder on somebody's team. Takes off for second. He ran on the right pitch. A breaking ball and good backup by Fontenot. Sometimes you just guess right. The curve was about 69, 70 miles an hour. Yep. Took off first movement that time. And got the off speed pitch you were talking about. Giovanni Soto really rushed his throw. Looked like he didn't have any seams. When you see a ball sink that hard going into second base, it usually indicates that the catcher didn't have a real good across the seam grip before he tried to make his throw. And that happens most often when the runner gets a big jump and you're trying to rush your throw behind home plate. You don't take that extra split second. To find the seams, you just try to get rid of it as quickly as you can. The 
bouncer to Terrio. Little double clutch, but still time to get Castillo, who might have been able to beat that out about five or six years ago. They leave one, it's 4 1 Mets. Carlos Zambrano, on the other hand, allowing a season-high 11 hits as he exited in the fourth. Visit your Honda dealer. Test drive a 2009 Honda Accord. Figueroa was able to get out of that fifth inning by getting Derek Lee on a 3-0 pitch on a fly out to right. And it's one and one on Aramis Ramirez. John Lovitz of Saturday Night Live fame will handle the seventh inning stretch a little bit later. We saw him in Southern California last week. Yeah, that's the ticket. That's the ticket. Down on a knee, the flip to Figueroa. He struggled in the outfield, now playing first with Delgado out. Step aside and see what's coming up on WGN. They try to avoid the sweep. They have dropped nine of their last 11. Two out to Fukudome. Popped into left, fairly deep. Not going to go on a day like this. Jeremy Reed for out number two. White Sox did lose that game at Yankee Stadium, 8 3 the final, and Detroit won. 4 3. Minnesota leading 2 1 over Texas in the bottom of the sixth. The White Sox are six back, and the Twins need to hold on to remain four and a half back of the Tigers over in the American League Central. Detroit got three in the bottom of the eight to win it. Placido Polanco up Grant Balfour. A three run homer to win it. Not much warmer there. 61 degrees in Detroit today. 
Justin Verlander got his 15th win. Fernando Rodney saved his 29th. Figueroa has been in command. He teetered in the first inning, gave up a run, but struck out Fukudome and Fox to end that frame. And now works with a three run lead in the sixth. Good start for Paul Bird. In his 09 debut for Boston, swing and a miss. Six shutout innings, seven to nothing Red Sox in the ninth over the Blue Jays. Here it's 4 1 Mets. Is slim and praise you. Slim with Praise You on a Bud Light fan cam. With just the right taste that never fills you up. The difference is drinkability. Derek Lee scoots over to his right. Marshall covering and Murphy is out. Care how undermanned or how many superstar players you're missing from your lineup. Anytime a pitcher can work his way through the three, four, five hitters in the lineup and get out unscathed, you like to think that some of that momentum would switch back to the third base dugout. Sean Marshall gets the number three hitter, Daniel Murphy, to ground harmlessly to Derek Lee at first. Now he goes to work on Jeff Francoeur. For ball one, one and one on Frank Coor. Too many trades are made between division competitors, like the deal the Mets and Braves made. Ryan Church 
for Jeff Francoeur. He's trying to change it up. Two two pitch bouncer to third not hit hard and a barehanded play by Ramirez the throw is in time to get Frank cool. Nice play by Aramis Ramirez going to the bare hand that internal stopwatch told him he didn't have time to glove make the exchange and then throw to first base so he went to the bare hand scooped and fired across to Derek Lee for the out. Strike to Jeremy Reed. Oh, and two. Bullpen's been very good. Gorzolani and Marshall have combined to give up just one hit to this point. Fontenot runs it over to Lee. John Lovitz with a seventh inning stretch. All right, fans, let me hear you, especially you, David. One, two, three. That's a career high. And John Lovitz, and the nominated actor and comedian, is with us in the booth. Thank you very much. With a lovely singing voice. Very nicely done. Thank you, Len. Thank you. I like at the end. You, you kind of hit hit all the notes there right at the end. Yeah, I go to Dodger Stadium a lot when they play it. That's what they do at the end, so I figured I'd add a little touch foul ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bob and I saw you. Uh, we had a couple of shots of you uh, on our last road trip, checking out the games. And here you are at Wrigley Field. Yeah, I, I, last time I was here it was uh, when I made that movie A League of Their Own, and we were out in the field. We shot it here, and I actually went up into the scoreboard, and I hope they don't arrest me. But I had to go. Up. I'm on TV. There you are. Thinking of getting rid of this, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know. Oh, and it's a fly ball to left field, and oh, it drops in for a single. Fontenot's on first. 
broadcasting this game. You know what I mean? You are now. Time to look at our high depth shot of the game sponsored by Comcast. Take it over, John. That's me, of course, with my famous half throw. <laughs> it was a real thrill. Of course, this first ball, the, uh, it, the, let's see. Oh, that's the one he caught. Yes, sir. I, I had to lob it in there. Normally, I'm throwing in the high 180s, 190s. I didn't want to hurt the guy. He's a rookie. <laughs> Cubs baseball in high definition, sponsored by Comcast. Go ahead, sir. Wind up and here's the pitch. And it's a grounder to the shortstop. Over to second and over to first for the double play. He's out. Oh, how disappointing for the Cubs. Are you channeling Vince Scully or the... is that John Lovitz as a play-by-play -play guy? Well, I don't want to brag, but I have met Vin twice, and ever since then, he sounds more like me. <laughs> now, let me ask you. No, he's great. What a nice guy he is. I've met him. He's the nicest man in the world. And, you know, that's just how he talks. You, you know, he's got the greatest uh, baseball voice. And, well, hi, John. How are you? Good to see you. You know, humor is very important. It is. Now, what place the Chicago's are in? What, they're, uh, the Cubs are in second place in the division. So they're going for the wild card? I would say the wild card would be their best shot. Five so would I, up. because you said it. Nine by I would the say the wild card would be their best shot. Two and oh. Will you quit repeating everything I say? Two and oh. Sam folds up. He's batting 259 this season. No home runs, no RBIs. Oops, not the guy you want up right now, but here's the pitch. Outside. This is easy. You see, you're ruining the bit here. Ball we three. try to make this sound difficult. <laughs> <laughs> you just jump right in. Well, you just kind of watch what happens. And here's the pitch on the way. Oh, he takes it. Oh, at ball four. Looked like a strike from up here, but what do I know? Len, what's your opinion? Ask Bob what his opinion is. Bob? I have no opinion. You haven't you. said a word. Yeah. Wait a minute. I know you. Nice to meet you, Bob. Nice to meet you. Yes, John. sir. Yeah. From the, uh, uh, Marlins, right? Uh, close. Arizona. I mean, uh, Arizona. Well, there it's you go. It's a resort community. Yeah, well, you, you know. look like the guy from the Marlins, except the younger. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've heard of you. Well, let's put it that way. Read the man. Well, that's a flower ball, and that's going to smack someone in the head. That's too bad. Did you say flower ball? What well, a it? foul ball oh, and then okay. a fly foul. It's called a flower. <laughs> Do you know anything about baseball? <laughs> it's a a flower. It's a fly ball that's foul. That's a foul. That's the second. If it's on the ground, it's just a foul. That's the second created word on the homestand. Another foul. <laughs> Eddie Vedder. Oh, and that's going to smack into somebody's head. No, he caught it. The fans seem more excited when a fan catches the ball. And over to you. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie Vedder created a word uh, this week. He said, I'm a possumist. Instead of optimist, he said possumist, but I knew you what mean? he meant. It's a new word. He's so a half owl and possumist. A possumist. Is that like a possum who's uh, uh, hopefully not dead? Right. Exactly. Or is that a, uh, I don't know what that is. That's not a word. He must have been hot. Anyway, Eddie's a nice guy. I actually met him. He he was on Saturday Night Live. And, uh, oh, right. And he was, no one knew who he was. And he was like a kid. He wanted pictures of everybody, including me. Then he got bigger than me, and I didn't like him anymore. And oh, it's a ground ball over to second, and he's out. Even though, what a waste of a slide. Can you throw it to break, John, as we say goodbye? Let's go over to the, we'll be right back after this commercial break on WGS Board.
left-hander John Grabo is on here in the eighth, and John Lovitz is still with us. Good to be here. Back to the game. Bob Bramley, am I right? And Len, I forget your last name. On my left, Doesn't it's matter. a high fly ball to right field. Milton Bradley with the call and an easy out. And over to Len. You are uh, in town performing, not just here. Yeah, I booth. forgot to mention. Yeah, I'm at the uh, Improv in uh, Schamburg in the. In the, the, I think it's the Westfield Mall or the Westwood Mall or the Woodwood Mall. Or the, okay. It's the biggest mall. Woodfield. To, Wood, well, all right. I, I knew it was Westfield or Wood, Woodfield. I know. I was testing you. Anyway, I'll be out there tonight at 7 o'clock <laughs> doing my comedy act. Wind up and here's the pitch. Oh. Ball. <laughs> What's so funny? Uh, one and on Brian Schneider. I'm going to hand you something, and when can you read that for us, please? Like a like a broadcaster would. Yes. Now? Yeah, please, anytime. All right. Well, uh, if you want our WGN email address, we're email accessible. It's Len and Bob, L E N A N D B O B, Len and Bob at ChicagoNow.com, and you can tweet us on Twitter.com/slash Len and Bob. You follow us, right? No, I don't want to. Yeah, I do. Why Twitter does your account. name come first? Bob won the World Series. What's that about? That's a good, that's I'm a good not question. trying to cause trouble. The windup, and here's the pitch. Oh, and Bob is swinging at Len's head, and a fight <laughs> broke out in the booth. Somebody get the umpire. Fellas, <laughs> please. It was a joke. <laughs> but seriously, why does Bob's name come second? And oh, and he's swinging again, and another hit to the shortstop. A catch, and Len is down for the count. Len, Len. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Wake up. <laughs> oh, oh, man. What do you think, fellas? Get this fat sucked out from under my chin. <laughs> Hopefully you won't waste it. No, no, fat is in, right? Yeah, in my chin. <laughs> <laughs> Seth Rogen's not as funny now. He lost weight. He's still funny. You have a sense oh, of he humor. Is funny. He is funny. I'm funny and fat-er. <laughs> But Two outs, nobody on base. The Cubs are pitching the windup, and here's the pitch. Oh, it's a foul to right field. And that's, oh, somebody caught it and dropped it. That's why I don't like when the fans boo, because they can't do anything the players do on the field. They can't even catch a foul ball. Look at that guy. It's the day of his life. Well, he's not happy out here. I imagine nothing much is happening at home. Don't rally, and it's, oh, it's foul again. I actually stood on the home plate and called with a bat like Babe Ruth. And then what did you do? And then I went to the dirt and I hit it over the fence. You hit it over the fence? From Well, oh, we weren't the we were doing League of Their Own and we weren't allowed in the grass. Oh, okay. So, so I was between day. second and third yeah. and uh, on the dirt and I was hitting balls to Tom Hanks and his son and they were on the warning track and I hit one uh, into the stands. And I just thought, gee, if I can hit it from there, it's not that much farther. But, uh, <laughs> I know I couldn't do it. Did you go into your home run trot after you launched that home run? Boom. Absolutely. And uh, But there's only a few people see it. And I was in the scoreboard. I know I was, nobody was here, and I crawled up in there. And I was in there with Madonna. We had a lot of fun in there. And why not? Here's the pitch. Ooh, strike two. I mean, three. That's Man, it. Get it right. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, throw it to break. All right, we're going to go to break. When we come back, the Cubs will be up in the bottom of the eighth.
baseball. Back to you, Len. <laughs> that was fun. Well, it's been the Nelson Figueroa and John Lovett show today. We enjoyed the Lovett show, the Figueroa show, not so much. Bradley takes ball one. Flow oh. ball. That that may take yeah. on a life of its own. You may hear that again before the year is over. My face hurts. Smiling, laughing. Funny man. Two balls, no strikes. 4 1, the Mets with a lead. Good rip, fouled it back. Well, Cubs are just not squaring him up real well these days. They did maybe early in the game, but not really since the first. They've had three singles since the first inning. Just done a real nice job of keeping his fastball away from the middle of the plate, working the corners with a little bit of movement. He's thrown that slider for strikes when he wanted to. He's bounced it in the dirt when he wanted to. He really hasn't had to get as creative as he does in some of his starts. Castillo did not catch it apparently, but I thought he did. And Bradley safe. See if the Cubs can take advantage. I think Jerry Manuel will probably come out. And it's a hit for Bradley. You take any breaks you can get on a day like this. Third time Bradley has reached. Look from up here like Castillo caught it. From our Southwest Sky Cam, you see the. Well, I don't know. He looked on replay like he caught it, but why would he run to first base if he did catch it? That's a very puzzling looking play there. Sure looked like he caught that ball in the air, but that's similar to a hitter getting hit by a pitch and not reacting. If you catch that ball in the air, you just hold it up and show the umpire, and uh, ideally he sticks his right hand in the air and makes the out call. So the Mets skipper pleading his case with Bill Welke. Jerry Mayne is either going to head to the mound here, possibly to make a pitching change. Yes, indeed, that's what he's going to do. I thought he might be going to appeal to one of the other umpires to see if they had a better look at it. So it'll be right hander Brian Stokes who really struggled on Friday.
got pounded on Friday. Took the loss, gave up four runs in a third of an inning, including a three run game winning homer by Alfonso Soriano. So he sets up for Francisco Rodriguez. And it's one and one on Derek Lee. We don't see Rodriguez up right now. And his right hander Sean Green is up with lefty Pedro Feliciano. Let's make you wonder though, Jerry Manuel would think about using his closer for more than an inning today. He hasn't pitched in a while. It's actually been five days. Two and one on Lee. Bradley at first after an infield hit. Ground ball should be to Castillo, Hernandez, and Murphy. Cup fans, when you're at Wrigley, make sure to buy a bottle of ice cold Pepsi or Diet Pepsi from a vendor. Then check for the Cubs win sticker under the bottle for your chance to win. An overnight stay at the Abbey Resort and Avani Spa in Lake Geneva at Montana, Wisconsin. Make sure to buy from your Pepsi vendor for your chance to win with Pepsi and the Abbey Resort. Well, it's up to Ramirez to kind of start a two out rally. Outside corner strike one. Now you mentioned the four runs that Stokes gave up on Friday in his appearance. Uh, that snapped a streak of 21 in the third innings where he had only allowed one run. Another part of a month and a half. Castillo backpedaling. Makes a catch. Just like that, the inning is over. Off to the ninth. Mets four, Cubs one. It's a fly ball to left field, and oh, it drops in for a single. I know the answers. Who's broadcasting this game? You and me. You are now. That's our AM PM player of the game. We go a little off the beaten path today. John Lovitz is our AM PM player of the game. Too much good stuff. Angel Guzman against Corey Sullivan, a pinch hitter. Uh, John went over to the Mets TV booth. After he left ours, and I was with Gary Cohn and the 
Keith Hernandez, and he looked over, knocked down the window, and nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. He's a big baseball fan. We saw him a couple of times at the uh, Cubs games on the West Coast swing. Two and one on Sullivan. Going to be K Rod in the bottom of the ninth. Be looking for his 28th save at this point. Swing and a miss, three and two. We get to see Carlos Marmel a lot, a unique delivery. But uh, Rodriguez throws his entire body into every pitch. Well, he really does. And I, I think the key, anytime you want to have a chance to beat the Mets with Rodriguez on the mound, is to get that leadoff man on base, especially if it's somebody who can run a little bit, because uh, Rodriguez just doesn't really concern himself too much with the base runners. Watch his big high leg kick. He puts everything into every pitch, and that allows base runners to get tremendous jumps against him. The key is to get somebody on. Guzman strikes out Sullivan. Angel Pagan is three out of four as he steps in. Cardinals still leading late against the Nationals, two to one. And the uh, top of the eighth at Bush Stadium in that one. Rockies with a first inning run in San Francisco. Like an RBI double from Troy Tulowitzki. Jason Hamill and Matt Kane matching up in that one. They're in the bottom of the second. Rockies are trying to hold off the Giants. They're only uh, one game ahead of San Francisco for the wild card lead at the moment. Florida won six to four over San Diego. And the Braves are in Philadelphia tonight. Jair Jurgens and Joe Blanton are the scheduled pitchers. Today would hurt. I mean, you know, you say just went two out of every three, you should be in good shape. But the Cubs are at the point in the season, game 128, where two out of three against a team like the Mets, not ideal, especially after losing two of three to the Nationals. So three and three first week would be disappointing. A lot of people uh, were pointing, pointing to this homestand as the one where the Cubs really could kind of make or break the season. Fly ball out in the left center for Jake Fox. Getting some more oohs and ahs from the crowd, but we have not seen a ball leave the yard yet. Have we seen a ball even get to the warning track? I don't believe so. New. And there have been some well struck balls in this game that just went absolutely nowhere. We mentioned it very early on with the conditions we have here today. It's the kind of day you want to work on your line drive ground ball swing because there just isn't anything up in the air. Possibly a drop pop up, but that's about the best you can hope for today. Two on Castillo. Oh, 
The bullpen has done its job extremely well. That is the third straight one, two, three inning and the fourth overall by the pen. The Cubs trail by three. Producer Doug Stanton, executive producer of WGN Sports, Bob Vorwald. Also, thanks to our technical director, Roberto Rios, our stage manager in the booth, Paula Ostrova, Christina Ballas, our studio coordinator back at WGN, and our entire crew here at Wrigley Field. Kosuke Fukudome greets Francisco Rodriguez with a single to right. Cubs need another base runner to put the tying run into play. Look at the numbers for K Rod on the season 27 out of 32 in save opportunities. The opponent's batting average under 200. 33 walks is a, is a pretty high total for a closer in 58 innings. He's also surrendered six home runs. Jake Fox swings away and pops up. And Castillo has been very busy out there and it's dropped, but they'll get an out. Fukudome will be forced at second as Frank Kaur couldn't catch it. Nikoske had to hang around first base. That's a an unconventional fielder's choice. It seems like that area right there behind second base in front of right field is where we've seen the most trouble today. Rancor was calling for it all the way. You could clearly see his mouth flying open and shut, open and shut. And as you said, Fukudome had nowhere to go on that play. You can't even go halfway on that play because if Francor does make the catch, you get doubled off first. So Kosuke was just caught in no man's land, was forced out at second base. That'll be a fielder's choice for Jake Fox. Fontenot now with Fox at first, the kick. And the pitch called a strike. Rodriguez has 235 career saves, just a couple of way for from a tying Uget Urbina, for the most by a pitcher born in Venezuela. Making his Wrigley Field debut, he wore 57 with the Angels, but that's Johan Santana's number, so he turned it around and now. Where 75. Bounced in front of home plate. Fox on his way to second. He'll get there in a wild pitch. Hey, 
Mitchell mentioned Rodriguez hasn't pitched for five days. Maybe a little bit rusty. That curveball bounced way out in front of home plate. A nice stop by Brian Schneider, but a good read by Jake Fox moves him into scoring position with one out. Last season, Rodriguez set a major league record with 62 saves, broke Bobby Thigpen's mark of 57 with the White Sox in 1990. Two and one. K Rod, as they call him, got a three year deal with $37 million in the offseason. Four time All Star. And a 2 2 count. When he came out of nowhere in the 2002 postseason for the Angels. Won back to back games against the Yankees in the division series. Won two more against the Twins in the ALCS. And then he strikes out Fontenot. Cubs down to their final chance. Well, Francisco Rodriguez, no question about it, has a devastating curveball. He's had a little trouble commanding it in this game. His fastball is. Fairly straight in the low to mid 90s, but he gives you all that motion the high leg kick the high front side with the arm Gives you a lot of different things to look at it makes it tough to pick up the baseball Trying to save it for Figueroa As he faces Giovanni Soto This will do it By Hernandez and the Mets get out of here with one win. The Cubs won the first two. But stymied by Nelson Figueroa with a career best 10 strikeouts. Rodriguez the save, and the Mets beat the Cubs 4 to 1.